Hello, my name is Iron Pacifist, and this is my level 3 combat restricted Iron Man on Old School RuneScape. Last episode, we branched out a little bit and did uh, a couple very interesting quest bosses. We used a bunch of weird mechanics. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing that. Uh, in this episode, we're going to get back into a little bit of the skilling. We got a big old stack of broad arrows that we got to get through on the road to not quite 90 fletching but as close as we can to it before we get into some winter todd so come along and let's start getting some fletching xp and first of the levels with the broad arrows up to 83 fletching and this set here is going to put us at under 100k broad arrows left of this set and uh, I also reset the XP per hour over here so you can see we're getting a very nice 400k just over 400k on just about 100k broad arrows left and flying into 84 fletching I love making these broad arrows they are so fast and we got another fletching level here up to 85 now very nice for magic longbows I'll definitely be making those uh, but uh, it looks like we are going to have enough for 86 in the broad arrows it's pretty easy just take that XP left and divide by 10 and that's how many arrows you need so we are gonna get at least one more level because I have not really calculated out how much we're gonna get there's a nice one and it's even a post into the CC those are always the most fun levels so as I'm working on this fletching, I realized that uh, I kind of skipped over, you know, a lot of uh, interesting grinds like crafting and construction because they're already 99 by the time we started the series. So I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about how we did that 99 construction grind. Uh, so over here, there's a list of what that took uh, starting at level 60. Um, GP came from Pyramid. I would not recommend that now. The feud is possible now. So just sell blood runes like we did uh, last episode to get, um, you know, these broad arrowheads. I would definitely recommend that over Pyramid. But I did Pyramid. I'm not going to make you watch me do Pyramid. Uh, but what you might not know is that the Pyramid uh, at level below level 72 has a max hit of 10 and is therefore unsafe on this build. But at 72, it, the max hit goes down to 8 which makes it safe. You just have to bring food and a level 75 and higher the you stop failing completely other than a couple of obstacles which you can miss the timing on. Uh, there's no RNG failures anymore so you actually don't even need food so you can just fill up with water skins and get extended trips. So I spent a lot of time there and uh, if we post we're just gonna post this into the CC just to flex the 3000 agility pyramid laps uh, those are 20 per hour so you can figure out how much time that took that was a lot uh, but moving on from there we did fossil island teaks uh, again I think you you can kind of uh, imagine how this one works I use the private teaks up here on fossil island they're definitely the fastest and least competitive way to get teaks into a bank we did those ones and now we'll get into some of the interesting stuff so how did I turn those teaks into planks after they were in my bank I don't have a lot of good teleport options uh, these days I would definitely recommend the Ring of the Elements, but what I did, uh, because I did this before GOTR, was teleport to the crafting guild, go to the bank there, grab out an inventory of logs, and take the balloon up to Varrock, and use the sawmill operator, and teleport back to the crafting guild to bank the planks and get more logs out. And these days definitely would recommend uh, just Ring of the Elements to the Earth Altar, and then you can use like a farming cape, so this you don't need a crafting cape anymore because this effectively locked you know the construction cape behind the crafting cape which is why I did it first but that's a little bit easier now and then once I had all of those planks done and that actually went pretty fast that was uh, only maybe 10 to 15 hours to make those planks we went and did mahogany homes so the teleports for mahogany homes I feel like were also interesting Again, before GOTR, so for getting to Varrock, we did crafting cape to balloon, and then ran over their two contracts over in uh, in this area of Varrock. Um, in which houses? I think it's these two houses over here. So we would run from there. If I got the south Varrock, there is a house down here that you have to do. I'd use the Chronicle and run up. For Artie, I started with the Artie cape, um, expecting kind of a mix of 
you know, southern and northern already. I didn't really look at the map too much before I started, but I quickly realized everything is northern already. So I switched to a fishing cape because uh, these are the houses here in this area. So we switch to fishing cape and you run down from there instead of using an already teleport. Uh, for Falador, again, no GOTR. I would definitely recommend the Ring of the Elements to the Air Altar these days. It would put you uh, just over here a little bit closer, but I would run from the Crafting Guild all the way up and into East Falador. These were my least favorite contracts. Definitely the longest run of them all for sure. And let's see where that Ring of the Elements would take you nowadays. Quite a bit closer, quite a bit closer. So that one's nice. And uh, Hasidius, not that interesting. I actually had the intended teleport for this one. Xerix Talisman uh, right here, and then you run down here for this house or up here for these ones. Um, sometimes I would use minigame teleport to tithe for this south house uh, just to save some t charges on that one because they can be kind of annoying to get. And I did uh, about 4,000 contracts on that. Um, and you know, you might be surprised that this was not that bad XP, you know, compared to doing Mahogany Homes correctly, efficiently with all the intended teleports and full spell book. Uh, I was only about 10% less XP per hour than that, so, you know, I gotta say, I'm, I'm kind of happy with uh, with how that grind went, um, and getting that, that con cape absolutely is very nice, very nice to have in the bank, and I uh, use it a lot. Just wanted to show off uh, a little bit of that, and I think so here and there we'll talk about some of these skilling grinds that were already done on this account, just to show off uh, the methods that were used. And over here, hanging out with the normies at the GE, dropping under 50k arrows to go. And we are hanging out with Oziok for 86 fletching. And it looks like we're going to be just a little bit about 16k arrows short of 87. But you know what? I think I'm just going to go get 17k more arrow shafts. Uh, it's not that much. And uh, you know what? Might as well go for 87 it'll be so close we're gonna start by finishing up these and then we'll just get a little bit more materials to get 87 before winter todd and as i'm on this farm run a nice little milestone i totally didn't miss there with 27 million farming xp more than double 99 farming just from herbs pretty much oh boy and here's an exciting little milestone. If we look over on the right, this is uh, the Bank XP plugin, which shows how much Herblore XP we have in the bank, uh, which right now is just under 5.2 million and 5,000 away from level 97 banked. And I have all these potions when they have multiple options set, like prayer potions or brews or super attacks. Um, when there's multiple options so this is accurate it's actually almost even a bit low because it's not counting stamps but that's okay because this uh, will still be exciting as we deposit these toad flax and click refresh that is level 97 herblore banked only two herblore levels left to bank which is a lot it's about 2.4 mil <laughs> xp but uh, we'll get there one day it feels good to have another level down and here is going to be the last of these broad arrows uh, all done what we've got so far just a little bit short <clears throat> of 87 fletching but we're going to take a look at the profit loss here and then calculate how many we need for 87 so we started uh, over here with 7.4 mil in uh, materials and these aren't tradable so we can't use the price checker but we can look at uh, their elk value because I guess that's all they're worth now, uh, 4.7 mil. So that is a good loss there of just under 3 mil, 2.5 mil. Uh, more more hits to the bank value on this account. Oh, well. Uh, at least it went to a good cause. We got a lot of fletching XP and a lot of fletching levels out of that. So I think uh, before I go to Winter Todd, because I want to fletch at Winter Todd for more XP, we're going to get uh, one more level because we're so close to it yeah 14,136 more arrows will get us the level because winter todd xp scales with level for fletching um, so I just want to do that it'll give us a little bit 
more fletching XP on our winter tot. So I'm going to go quickly grab, um, sorry, 33,000? What? Uh, I am confused. I'm going to figure this out and get uh, however many I need. I thought it said 14,000. Why did that just change? I'll figure it out and we'll be back. And these are going to be the last of the arrow shafts we need. I went a little above the 142 to 33,150 just because obviously they're made in sets of 15. Don't really have a choice there. Uh, please don't, you know, go after me for making eight extra arrow shafts. But uh, I'm going to start putting feathers on these including the extra eight. And we found a nice lovely spot on the beach here to fletch these arrows and that is all 33,150 that we're going to need for uh, to finish off this fletching level. Uh, and if we bring in the calculator here we're going to need about two mil cash uh, to finish this off to get the broad arrow heads. So I am off to sell a bunch more of my blood runes to afford all the broad arrow heads. Looks like someone else was here recently, but that's okay. That's the best part of this store. It still stays the same all the time. So I'm going to see how many we have to sell. We're aiming for two mil cash, and we're starting off with 101553 blood runes. So let's get that money. All right, and with these last couple of sales, there is two mil cash even. And it looks like that was 10,000 <coughs> blood runes, which you probably could have done the math on that yourself. Uh, not too much, but it is sad that we no longer have the white stack ripped to that. But on the bright side, at least uh, after I finish fletching and fire making, I'm going to be going back to root crafting to start working on base 95s after we finish base 90s. So, you know, that blood rune stack will recover pretty soon. And with this last purchased from Crystalia, there is our 33,150 broad arrowheads. Uh, and we had a little bit of cash left over, which is nice. I overestimated how much this would cost, so it's a nice little uh, extra to keep into the pocket change. And we're going to start putting these uh, heads on towards the next fletching level. So uh, I was looking at the calculator over here, and uh, a few clips ago, I had selected arrow shafts, headless arrows, and broad arrows, and it said 13,000. Um, and then I clicked something and it changed and I was a little confused what I had clicked to make that change uh, and I figured it out now <laughs> so this is my current experience in fletching uh, this is pulling it right off of my character page you can see right here uh, three eight five six seven five nine and that means I only need to do 11,554 and if I deselect and I do just broad arrows it'll be a little bit higher um, oh, see, it did it again. So here's what's happening. Uh, so that is my current experience. Um, however, sometimes when I click here, uh, it keeps setting this to not my current level, but rather level 86, uh, which is much lower. So I don't actually need 33,150. And wow, now it's just doing it every time. What if I do this and then this? Oh, it just keeps doing it. Okay, I can't even select anything right now. I can't search because every time I move the cursor, it resets. All right, uh, that is that a new bug in in Runelight? Because I swear this didn't used to happen. What if I push Enter? No. Nope. And even if I switch tabs, I can't. Okay, well, it's something like eleven thousand ish, roughly. Uh, seems like a bug that when you click there it uh, it resets this and now I can't even do anything it just keeps resetting it by itself but uh, we we bought way too many um, arrows that's okay we're gonna have like 20,000 left over I'm not gonna make them right now we'll need them eventually anyway all of this stuff to get 90 because winter Todd's definitely not gonna get us from 87 to 90 even including the resources we'll get from the loot crates, it will not get us all the way to 90. So whatever, it's a little bit for later. We went a little bit too far. Oh well, we're gonna use up whatever we need. Um, here we can see uh, real quick right here, if we do this, uh, it looks like if we divide that XP left by 10, uh, we're gonna need about 11.5K. Uh, so we'll have a little over 20K left over. No big deal, they'll still be useful in the end.
So I'm going to get started on these, and uh, that next level is going to come a little quicker than we thought. So that's nice. I was uh, doing a birdhouse run, and I'm not sure what it is, but something about Fossil Island seems different today. All right, we're hanging out with, uh, with my new friend Ancient Shroom here, and uh, I think we only need one more set of broad arrows and 87 fletching is done now make magic shields i will not be doing that <clears throat> but i think uh with that we're gonna call uh call this episode there i mean this episode we got uh, a ton of fletching levels uh, a lot of progress on the account a decent amount of total levels like that we're getting close to 1500 that'll be real exciting when we get that and next episode we're gonna jump into the fire or this cold and light it on fire yeah and uh, get start working on fire making and fletching in parallel so tune in next time for that take care and I'll see you later